In this video, I will be discussing the steps that you should be taking to become a falconer in the UK. There are already quite a few videos on this subject on YouTube, but most of them are directed at American falconry, and UK falconry is quite different. If you are thinking about becoming a falconer and think that there is a magic secret that I'm going to tell you in this video that will make you a falconer, then you may as well click away now. I will not be giving you any information on how you should get your first bird. But I will be discussing steps I think that you should be taking to obtain the knowledge that you need before you even consider getting a bird of prey. As well as providing you with valuable knowledge that you just won't find on a Google search, books allow you to start understanding the language of falconry. Falconry has been around for thousands of years, and so it has its own language. I would quite like to live in Germany, but I would struggle to live there if I just moved without learning the language first, and falconry is the same. Say you were out with an experienced falconer who is helping you train your first hawk. If they were to say to you, just move the jesses forward so her creance doesn't drag through her train, would you understand what they were saying? If your answer is no, then you have not read enough falconry books. So what books do you read? Well that's entirely up to you, but I'm going to show you my three favourite books. Falconry and Hawking by Philip Glazier, regarded as the falconry bible by many, this will help you go from getting your first ever bird all the way up to successfully hunting with a hawk. Understanding the Bird of Prey by Nick Fox, this is my personal favourite and it's just full of valuable information in a bit more of a scientific detail than falconry and hawking. I really love the structure and function section at the start of this book. The Encyclopedia of Falconry by Adrian Walker. This is a really useful additional book to have beside you whilst reading other books. There's a lot of terms in falconry and it's difficult to remember all of them when you're first starting out. So to be able to just flick through and see what each word means is really helpful. Jesses. A pair of straps, one attached to each of the hawk's tarsi. Events are a really good way to open your eyes to a lot of the things in falconry. You might not have heard of any specific falconry events, but there are a few. However, you don't have to wait for one of these, because most country and game fairs will have a falconer present, or even a whole falconry section. Find out what events are happening locally to you, and whether they will have a falconer present. Go and speak to them, because it's likely that they have gone through the same thing that you are going through now, and they might be able to help you. If not, they might just be able to give you a few tips. I would definitely recommend visiting the British Falconry and Raptor Fair in May. You get to watch experienced falconers do displays all day long and there are stalls selling falconry equipment all around that helps you really get a good feel for the kinds of things that you will need and the prices. There are also really experienced falconers on the weathering lawn all day long that are there to answer your questions. And if all of that wasn't enough, there's also several clubs that attend. And that leads us on to our next section. You don't have to be a falconer to join a falconry club. Clubs are a really great way to meet experienced falconers local to your area, and it really helps you build those useful connections that will help out in the long run. Many clubs are regional, such as the Yorkshire Hawking Club, however there are certain clubs like the British Falconers Club, which has regions that cover the entire UK. And these regions will often put on local events, where you can go and socialise with falconers. Clubs often come with a lot of benefits, such as field meets. Now, you don't need a bird to go on a field meet, you can just go as a spectator, and this really helps to get a first-hand feel of falconry in the field. There are also other benefits, such as insurance whilst flying your bird. Experience days you might want to take with a pinch of salt. By no means am I saying that you need to go on an experience day to become a falconer, or am I saying that going on an experience day will make you a falconer? But if you have never worked with birds of prey before, an experience day is an excellent way to let you know what you're getting yourself into. You have no idea how you will react as you hold your hand out and eight pointy talons attached to zip tied tendon toes flies at your hand with the only thing to protect you is a leather glove. And eight pointy talons attached to zip tied toe. <laughs> Next up is courses, and these seem to change the certificate that you get at the end quite a lot. The certificate I have doesn't even exist anymore. The current certificate is something called the Raptor Awards, and this is typically a week-long course that covers things like housing, 
feeding, training, weight management, health, housing, I've already said housing, legislation, flying. There are several centres that offer these courses and there are now even a couple of falconry schools that are designed specifically for teaching this kind of thing. However, they can get a bit pricey, so just know that a certificate is not a requirement here in the UK. Volunteering at a centre or finding a mentor. Now I've saved these two for last because in my opinion they are the most important. This is where you really get to get stuck in and find out what it actually takes to become a falconer. Finding a mentor can be tough, but if you do, it's very rewarding. Having somebody able to help you one-on-one -on -one is really useful and it lets you actually have a go at falconry. A mentor is also really useful when it comes to actually getting your first bird as they are able to help you through every step. Finding a local centre to volunteer at might be a bit easier than finding a mentor, but this might come with a lot of work before you actually get to do any work with the birds. The upside to volunteering at a centre is the variety of birds that you get to work with. So they are my tips on the steps that you should be taking if you want to become a falconer in the UK. Let me know in the comments if you're trying to become a falconer and there's anything obvious that I missed out or if this really helped you. Make sure to subscribe for more falconry videos in the future. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. You have no idea how you will... You have no idea... You eyes at your hand with all the... With the zip tie toe... <laughs> attached to zip tie toe... <laughs> attached to zip tie toe...